Happy Father's to Father's Day to all the fathers. Church, can we stand? Let's worship together. We want to take a moment to welcome everyone online. Church, let's clap those hands. Come on, we sing together. Wandering into the night, watching a place you hide. This weary soul, this bag of home. I try, and I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. Oh, he picked me up, turned me around, puts my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, because you feel my heart. 
our hands lifted towards Jesus. Can't we just sing that bridge? Just as a declaration and just a reminder of God's love for us. You are perfect in all of your ways. Come on, sing it out. You are perfect in all of your ways. That's our Father Jesus. In all of your ways to us. He's a perfect Father, we say. You are perfect in all of your ways. Come on, will you declare that this morning? Perfect in all. Yes, He is. good, good father, perfect in all of your ways. God, you are good and gracious and loving, slow to anger, compassionate in all ways. God, running after us with your love and your grace and your goodness. And today, Lord, we sing of your praises and we thank you for this Father's Day. We thank you especially, Lord, that you model for us what it means to be a good, good father. And Lord, you know that so often we don't get it right. We fall short. And so we thank you for your forgiveness and your grace. We need it every day. But today, especially, we thank you for all of our dads, our grandpas, our uncles, brothers. Lord, we thank you so much for our stepdads, for those, Lord, who are like spiritual fathers to us. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless each one of them today, that they would know of your love and your goodness for them. Lord, that they would see themselves through your eyes. Thank you for the influence and wisdom and strength that they provide for us. Lord, thank you for all of our fathers today. We are so grateful and we pray your blessing on each one of them. We pray, Lord, that you would receive them into your arms and help them to know how deeply loved and appreciated they are today. And Lord, thank you for the gift of Father's Day as we celebrate it with you today. Thank you for your goodness and grace in our lives. We give you all the praise in Christ's name and all of God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, please enjoy a seat if you would. Let's give a big shout out to all of our dads and grandpas and granddads, stepdads today. We are so grateful for each one of you and want to welcome you to CBC today. My name is Kathy Burkholder. I'm one of the pastors here. I've been away this last month on uh, my last part of a sabbatical, so it's good to be back. I've missed you and uh, so glad to be back here today. Want to welcome those of you joining us online or here in person, whether you're joining locally or across the country or even the world. We're so glad to have you here with us today. If you're new to CPC or you feel like you're new, we wanna give a shout out to you. We're so glad to have you here and invite you out to the information table right after service so we can give a gift to you and just help you get to know who we are as a church. If you're joining us online, we also wanna welcome you, help connect with you. So if you just text CPC Connect at 55444, we have a gift we'd like to send your way. 
And speaking of gifts, we have gifts for our dads today. We have a great bottle of hot sauce for each one of our dads today. And uh, to go with this, we have breakfast burritos for everyone. Uh, today, so, but you get a choice of your, you know, you get to pick your poison today. There's lots of different hot sauces out there for your breakfast burritos. These are just for our dads. We also have dad's root beer, can't miss that. So all of our dads, come enjoy that after service today. We have those gifts that we wanna give to you. We love you, we're for you. We appreciate you so much. And we wanna give a shout out to some of our dads, give some prizes away today. So if you are a new dad, and if you're in the family room today, you can come on over, because this one might apply to you. If you are a brand new dad with a baby that is four months or less, would you stand up? A baby four months or less, stand up, stand up. There we go. Yeah. If there's. Anybody in the family room, come on over right now. Okay, what is that? Is that the only one standing? Okay, there we go. We got a prize for you. Our worship team's coming. Let's give them a hand. Woohoo! That's awesome. That's great. Okay, tell us how old that baby is. How old's the baby? Shout it out. How old's the baby, Shane? Three months. All right. You're, you're going to definitely need that gift certificate. That's good. And those of you, I want to shout out to our dads or stepdads who have the most kids. So if you are a dad or a stepdad with four kids or more, stand up. Four kids or more, stand up. There we go. Whoa. You need a hand just for that. That's awesome. Okay, stay standing. If you are a dad or stepdad with six kids or more, keep standing. Six kids or more. Woohoo! Oh my. Okay. We're down to just two, six kids or more. If you have seven kids or more, eight kids or more. Oh, you both have eight? Oh, six. You have seven? Six. All right, both of you stand up. Six kids or more. All right, we have a gift certificate for both of you. There we go. Give them a hand. Woo That's awesome. Okay, now we're getting into some real competition. If you are a grandpa, a granddad, or a step-granddad with five kids or grandkids or more, five grandkids or more, stand up. Stepdad, granddad, five grandkids. Okay, those of you who have eight grandchildren or more, stand up, keep standing, keep standing. Whoa, we're down to three. If you have 10 grandchildren or more, keep standing. Is that it? Right here? Jared Van Pufflin, you are the winner. How many? 15. Oh, man. Okay, we got to pray over Jared today. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. Hey, we love all of our dads. Let's shout out to them again today. So grateful for each one of them. We want to honor you today, so be sure to get your prize out there this uh, today after service. We had an awesome week this last week celebrating kids camp here on campus. We had tons of kids, hundreds of kids, and 120 volunteers that helped to make it all happen last week. Can you thank them for all their work and their tech team? It was it was an amazing week of getting to share Jesus with so many of our kids and our Camp 5-6 as well. I want to ask for your prayers for our 5th and 6th graders who are heading off to Mount Hermon today and so excited for them to get to spend this next week at Redwood Camp, so please keep them in your prayers. And then this next Saturday, we have an awesome kids event for our whole community. It's called Splash, and it is a great water event where kids can come with the water slides. It's open to our whole community, so please invite friends to come join us. We're going to have Kona ice for the kids and iced coffee for parents. So hey, that is a big plus. So join us next Saturday for that. We're super excited for that. And then as we move into our, our time of giving, I just want to thank you for your generosity that helps us do things like Kids Camp and Splash and opportunities that we have to spread the love of Jesus out into our community. As you know, being for others like God is for us can change the world, and it changes people's lives one person at a time. And so thank you for the ways that you have given so generously. We're coming to the end of our fiscal year here at CPC. 
in just two weeks as we end our fiscal year, and we wanna end the year strong. So just appreciate you thinking about your giving for these next couple weeks as we head into summer. We so greatly appreciate your faithfulness and God's faithfulness to CPC as the ministry continues to reach people as we follow Jesus together. So just wanna encourage you to give either online or you can text to give and there's kiosk boxes out in the back as well. But would you join me in prayer this morning? Let's pray together. God, we do thank you for all of our dads today, especially. Thank you for the wisdom and strength that comes from them. God, we give you thanks for their love and their support for their influence and wisdom. Pray for those who are missing their dads today because they're no longer with us. And Lord, we trust you with your own goodness and grace and the promise of eternity that we have because of you. And today, Lord, we thank you especially for the gift of freedom that we have in you. Today, we remember our brothers and sisters in Galveston, Texas, who on this day in 1865, received the news that all enslaved people are free. And that was two whole years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. And so God, today on this Juneteenth, the first year that this is a national holiday in our nation's history, we celebrate freedom. Lord, you alone are the one who sets all captives free and we thank you for the freedom we find in you. As believers, we recognize what Jesus' sacrifice means to each one of us who are now free and are no longer bound to sin. And so God, we give you all the glory and praise today. Help us to be people who go out and serve you with our whole lives, giving your love and your forgiveness and your freedom to those around us as well that we find our true freedom in you. So receive these gifts today, God, and use them to your good purposes, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And today we're continuing our series, Songs of Summer. We're walking through the Psalms of Ascent, Psalm 120 through 134. Again, you can read all of those. All those psalms come to you at the low, low time cost of 15 minutes. So take a look at them, take a read. Um, if you recall, the Psalms of Ascent were used by the people of Israel as they traveled. Oh, oh, oh. oh. it fell. Guys, help me. All right. Um, <laughs> Did you hear all that stuff? Was I shout in the back? Could you hear me shouting loud enough? Okay, I'll do it again. Here we go. All right, good morning. Happy Father's Day. How are you doing? Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, we're going through the Psalms of Ascent, the Songs of Summer. Psalms of Ascent are Psalm 120 through 134. Go ahead and read those. It takes 15 minutes or less. Um, and if you remember, the Psalms of Ascent were these psalms that the Israelites used three times a year as they walked and journeyed up to Jerusalem to worship God. There were three festivals every year. God told the people, come to Jerusalem, gather all together to worship me. And as they went along the way, the people would recite, sing these psalms. They were the soundtrack of the road trip to worship God. And so we're looking at these as a means to be discipled in our faith in God and Jesus Christ, that we learn what it means to follow God, to be his people, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And the first week we look at this idea of a song of repentance, where the people turned from the lies of this world, and we can too. We turn and repent from the lies of this world and walk toward the truth of God. 
Last week, Pastor Tyler talked about the idea of a song of trust, a song of faith, where we direct our eyes upward to God, saying, God, you are where my help comes from. I get all that strength, all that hope, all that faith. I find it in you. You are trustworthy. And this week, we're going through Psalm 122, which is a psalm, a song of worship a song of worship. Um, think about those times in your life where you gather together with your people to do something together. You gather together with a crowd in one spirit, one, uh, one objective, one goal, one vision, and you do something together. A lot of us have gone to graduations recently. Um, we've been going to graduations, and we're all there to celebrate students, celebrate an accomplishment. Some of us have been going to weddings. I was talking to one of our, our Kyle, who's back on the soundboard. Like Kyle said, this is only like the third weekend since he got married some months ago that he's been home. He's been at wedding after wedding after wedding after wedding. And have you been to a wedding lately and you're gathering together to celebrate a bride and a groom, to celebrate what God's doing in their life, to celebrate a union, to celebrate all these great things. Or think about in sports, we gather together to celebrate, to cheer on our favorite team, the hometown team. Now, uh, I had an awesome experience for my 28th birthday, 2013. Uh, my wife, Jess, bought me Warriors tickets. World champion Warriors, by the way. Can I, can I get an amen? Incredible. Hey, by the way, when I, like, I prepare for these sermons, so I was preparing and kind of going through it on, Thursday, or on Wednesday before game six, and I said world champion Warriors. So you can thank me later for that prophetic word. And you better believe when they won, I was refreshing that NBA store and I got my hat and my shirt. They're on the way. It's amazing. But back in 2013, the Warriors had not been in the playoffs, had not advanced from the first round since the 2007 We Believe uh, team. So I get to go to game six, Nuggets versus Warriors. It is, if the Warriors win, they advance. And I am excited. I'm pumped. I got three of my friends. They meet me in my house. We have our jerseys on. We got all our gear on. We head to the Bar Castor Valley BART station. We get on the train. And there's Warriors fans on the train. They're already, we're getting ready. And we're saying like, go Dubs, high-fiving people. It's a party on the train. And each stop, as you get closer to the Coliseum exit, where Oracle, the true temple of the Warriors, the Golden State Warriors, Oracle Arena in Oakland. More and more people get on the train and the energy is building. It's a party. And you get off at the Coliseum and those of us, most of us have probably gone to an A's game, a Raiders game, when they were here, and a, or a Warriors game at Oakland. And you know what it's like getting off on that train and going across the bridge. People are getting excited. There's chants. There's all these different things. You get close to Oracle. You hear the music. The crowds are all gathering. You get inside the arena. And we just basically don't sit down for the entire game. It's an incredible game. We're cheering. My voice is all hoarse. My hands hurt from clapping. I'm just screaming. You're willing your team to win. And even though it got close at the very end, I actually watched the highlights the other day to get myself back in that mood and that spirit. Like, you got close, but they won. And it was incredible. And the confetti starts falling. You start high-fiving, hugging complete strangers. You're cheering all these things. I got a picture from where my seat was. Like, that's where we were. <laughs> Way up there. I can, you can see the ceiling. I can touch the ceiling of Oracle. <laughs> but being in that place, I mean, I could have been at home watching on a big screen or something like that, had a better view. But being up there, even though you needed binoculars to see Steph Curry shoot a three, it was way better being with my people, being with Warriors fans, celebrating in that space. And Psalm 122 is that spirit, the people of God coming together to worship God in the city of God, in the temple of God. They're getting ready for that. They're getting excited for that because there's something special about being with your people. I'm going to read this psalm, and we're going to unpack it together and see what God has for us. So here it is, Psalm 122. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stands the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, 
our God. I will seek your prosperity. This is a song of worship. A song of the people of God coming together to worship the God and creator of the universe. Uh, we've been looking, I said we'd use as a kind of a guidebook, kind of a help supplementary material, Eugene Peterson's A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. I really do encourage you, pick it up. It's a great book where Peterson talks about discipleship through the lens of these Psalms, the Psalms of Ascent. And here's what Peterson says about Psalm 122. We've got a quote right here. Psalm 122 is the song of a person who decides to go to church and worship God. That's what this psalm is about. And which brings us to that big idea, what we wanna walk away with this morning. Here it is. We are made to worship God with God's people. We are made to worship God with God's people. We were all made to worship, and we all do worship something or someone. We might worship at the altar of money or success or family or relationships or power or another God. But we were made to worship God, our creator, our savior, our Lord. And so when we live in that, we're actually being the people that he has made us to be. And conversely, when we don't worship God with his people, we're not fully the person that God has made us to be. So we want to look at this, see, see the truth of that, see the benefits. What happens when we actually gather together to worship God? So as we get started, let's pray and ask that God would bless our time together. Will you pray with me? So Lord God, we thank you that we are here today to worship you, to know you, to celebrate you, to be together with our brothers and sisters in Christ and worship the God of the universe. So Lord, I pray that you would inspire in us a desire, a need to worship you. It's already there. So Lord, fan that into flame. Help us to be the people that you made us to be. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to start off before we even get into all this stuff. I want to talk about worship. I want to just define that word for you. A lot of times we might have different understandings of what that is. Some of us might think of worship as the music. When Shane's up here and the band's up here, that is worship. We worship through, the worship is the song. And then we have like an offering or maybe a baptism and a sermon. And worship is the song. But really worship, let's just get to the working definition of worship. Here's what it is. Ready? Worship is expressing adoration to God. Did you catch that? Worship is expressing adoration to God. It is a response to God, to who he is, to what he means to us, to what, responding to what he has done in our lives, celebrating and praising God. So yes, absolutely. When we sing worship songs, songs of praise, we are worshiping God. But also, we talk about even when we do offering, when we do a, a time of generosity and giving, that is worshiping God because we're responding to God through our generosity. God, I know that you're at work, and I know that when I put this money in here, like in this box, or I donate online, when I do that, I know that you're going to take that, and you're going to change people's lives. We respond to God. Even in the message, we celebrate and worship God through the teaching and preaching of his word so that we can be transformed people. We hear his word. He speaks to us and we are changed. We baptize. Uh, we did a baptism service the other week. We get to celebrate and worship God. God, we praise you for a transformed life. So everything that happens in this space on a Sunday, when we gather together, is worship. We are worshiping God. And so we see these people, they are responding. They're walking into the city. They've come up to the city of God, Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem is the highest city in all of Israel. And the people, so symbolically, they're going up to God. They are ascending to the Temple Mount. And the temple is built in the highest place in the city. So the city of Jerusalem is built all around the temple. And the temple is built all around the Ark of the Covenant, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, this ornate box that God commanded to be built that housed the Ten Commandments, pieces of manna and other artifacts and relics that would remind people of God's faithfulness to them. It was the symbolic seat of power, his symbolic throne, his symbolic footstool where God's presence resided most specially here on earth. And so you can imagine the excitement. 
coming into the city, into the city gates. They talked about how the city was compacted together. Really, it's that idea that it's built for the purpose of worship. And they're coming in and you're getting excited. Do you feel that way when you come in on a Sunday morning? Do you feel that kind of thrill when you drive onto campus and you see that first member of our parking team welcoming you in? Some of you, I know you feel that way. You start, you, you're welling up with excitement. You can feel it happening in you. But sometimes, um, I actually want to read this quote from Peterson again. Maybe some of us feel this way too. Here's what Peterson says. You see it on the screen too. One of the afflictions of pastoral work has been to listen with a straight face to all the reasons people give for not going to church. My mother made me do it when I was little. There are too many hypocrites in the church. It's the only day I have to sleep in. I've used a couple of these. There was a time when I responded to such statements with simple arguments that exposed them as flimsy excuses. Then I noticed that it didn't make any difference. If I showed the inadequacies of one excuse, three more would pop up in its place, so I don't respond anymore. I listen with a straight face and go home and pray the person that person will one day find the one sufficient reason for going to church, which is God. I go about my work hoping that what I do and say will be usable by the Holy Spirit to create in that person a determination to worship God in a Christian community. I don't know about you, but I do see myself in that passage. There are, are this uh, section of this book. I see myself Sometimes I see myself in the psalmist. I come into this place. I'm like, I am ready to go. I am, can't wait to worship God with, with you all. And there are weeks where I just want to sleep in. Or I want to manufacture some excuse to God. Like, God, like you understand. You get it. I don't want to be there that week, this week. Did you know that for the first time in the history of our nation, the amount of people that say, I belong to a house of worship, I go to church of some kind, has dropped below 50%. For the first time, 47% of people say they belong to a house of worship or they attend. Do you know that today, Father's Day, is actually, can be a kind of dubious day if you work in the church world. Um, Mother's Day is the third highest attended Sunday of the year. Do you know that? Mother's Day, yeah, go moms, you guys are awesome, amazing. <laughs> Father's Day not true today, so you're all off the hook. Father's Day has the dubious distinction of being a total dice roll. Some years, it's full, like today, it's packed in here. And some years, it's a ghost town. And we think, why is that? Why is that? I mean, if this is really the time that we come to worship God with his people, Shouldn't it be just this huge priority in our lives? And I'm not here to guilt trip you into coming to church. That's not going to work. Peterson cited that, right? He spent, he spent his career as a pastor trying to convince people. That's not what we're trying to convince you of. But really, if you know the God of the universe, if you want to worship and know and experience him, it's done best with his people throughout the history of the world, throughout the history of God and his people, they have always gathered together to worship him. We look at these festivals, the gathering of God's people to worship God. When Jesus was here on this earth, his earthly ministry, he was kicking off, he was starting the church, the gathering of his people. Do you know that the word church is actually a word in Greek called ekklesia? Ekklesia is here, right here. And ekklesia means gathering that's the meaning of the word. Church is not a technical term. It's a word that means gathering. So if Jesus was doing his earthly ministry here today, if he was at work here today, co coming around, like coming to our towns and spreading the word, he'd say, I'm not, bu not I'm building my church. I'm building my gathering. I'm growing the gathering of my people so that people will come and worship God in spirit and in truth. That's what we're here to do. So throughout time and history, Christians Followers of God have gathered together. So that's why, we do, that's why we worship. That's why we do this thing called church. That's what was happening here. So what are the benefits? What does actually happens when we gather together to worship God? Well, here's the first thing. When we worship, worship gives us a structure for life. 
Worship gives us a structure for life. Now, some of you are thinking like, that doesn't sound super fun or anything like that, like structure. I mean, for me, my heart sings when I have some structure in my life. Anyone else like a little structure? Okay, a couple of you. All right, it's great. But God gives us a structure because God in all of us, remember we were made to worship. He made us with a desire for order, for rhythms, for remembrances. Think back to the very beginning of your Bibles in Genesis. The first chapter is God creating the heavens and the earth, the land and the sea, the birds and the fish, the animals, plants, trees, and people making us. And he did that in six days and he rested on the seventh. So the very first chapter of the Bible gives us a seven day week that we use still to this day. We love those rhythms. He's put that on our heart. We have these kind of habits, these places where we remember God, we do these things. We have things like these festivals. Three times per year, people gather together. There's a rhythm of remembrance. We do this in our own personal lives. We have birthdays, we mark the year. Each passing year, we have a new year on January 1 for us. And for each one of us, we kind of mark those years. It's my birthday. I'm another year older. I'm another year closer to the grave. Or like, you know, all those things. We get farther and farther. We use those as markers. We have calendars. We got all sorts of different things. We have are made with this desire for rhythms and remembrances. And so each week, we gather together to worship God with God's people. That's what we do. You think about, think about the last two and a half years, especially back when we were sheltering in place. I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things for me was there was no rhythm, no routine, every single day blended into the next. I never knew what day it was of the week it was. I never knew what day of the month it was. Sometimes I did not know what month it was. It was crazy, that feeling of malaise. There was no, I wasn't taking the kids to school. I wasn't going to the office. I wasn't coming to, uh, to get, I wasn't gathering with you all in person. And it kind of unmoored me from that sense of rhythm, remembrance, and routine that God has put, has made me to have. I'm sure many of you felt the exact same way. And so I'm, now that we're back, I'm so excited because I have those things back and it's so good to be a part of that. So I want you to think about why do you come here? So if this is really supposed to be that routine that every single week, this gathering that we have, this thing that we do together, we actually gather together as the people of God to worship God. What gets you here? What gets you tuned in? to watch and to experience and to worship God with his people. Do you come because you know who's singing? You know the set list? You know that this one's gonna be good? Do you go because you see who's preaching? Maybe you saw like, it's Ryan sleeping in today. You know, like, that's okay. Maybe you have, uh, maybe, maybe you wanna ask your question like, why do you sometimes like you arrive late? Now today we, we were, Guys, you were clicking today. We were firing all cylinders. But a lot of times it's the discussion on our team. I'm just going to be totally honest and transparent with you. We look around and think, man, sometimes we start, we're singing praise to God. We're kicking it off with singing worship songs and the room will be half empty. Half empty. And I want you to ask like, why? Like if you're that person, I'm not here to just guilt trip you or make you feel bad about yourself, but ask like, why? Because we really do believe that when we gather together, we're worshiping God with his people. And if you miss two or three songs, man, like you've missed it. You've missed a core part of what we were made to do. Or maybe you're online today and maybe you're, uh, you're at home because, or maybe you're out of town and you want to tune into church. That's amazing. But I want to ask, like, why are you online? And why don't you come back? You might have a totally legit reason, and that's great. I don't want to, again, not, this is not about shame or guilt, but has that become your habit and your routine? Is that what's more comfortable for you? You know, every single week, still, we have people coming back to CPC and all sorts of churches, but here at CPC, we have people coming back for the first time in a year, in two years, in two and a half years. They've been away and they're coming, they've been watching online and they're back in person for the first time. And let me tell you something I've never heard a single one of them say. 
man, online is so much better than being with all these people. <laughs> no one, to my knowledge, has ever said that. When they come back, they say, I missed it. I, I'm so glad I'm back. It's way better. Man, the online thing is good, but it's way better being in the room. It's way better singing a song to God and worshiping him with shoulder to shoulder with other believers. It's way better hearing a message with people in this room. It's way better taking communion. It is. It's not like, and again, not to shame, but we were made to worship God with God's people. The church is not a building. This is not the church. You are the church. You are the church. When we gather together, we are the church. That's what is the church. It's the gathering of God's people. So when we're not here and we're able, when we're not able, we're not doing that, we're not being who God has fully, who God has made us to be. This isn't just like get back in church, but no, it's be with God's people. That's what we're made to do, this fellowship and all these different things. Think about that rhythm of your life. Week in and week out, Sunday is coming. Think about a difficult week that you've had. Think something didn't go right at work or at home. You experienced an illness or a tragedy in your life. Something really difficult or just things aren't clicking. You have this malaise in your life, but you know, you know, Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. And you know that that day you will be able to be with God's people to bring your needs before God and share them with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And you come here with a heavy heart, like, will you pray for me? Can you help me? Will you be with me? Will you walk with me as God's walking with me? Or maybe you have an awesome week. You got the promotion, you got into the school, you had a great week, things are just clicking, you got married, you had a kid, something amazing happened. You had a great Father's Day. And you just can't wait to get to church to praise God with his people. Man, like, we're praising him together, and I'm going to share with my neighbor as I'm fellowshipping with my brother or sister in Christ. Like, you won't believe how God, good God's been to me. I want to just celebrate God's goodness in my life. That's that rhythm of our life that we know we have this anchor point that we know Sunday is coming. We're going to be with God's people, worshiping God in this experience together, getting refreshed, renewed, fired up, and prepared for the week that God has for us ahead. So worship gives us that structure for life. The second thing I want to kind of camp out on for a second is worship fuels our love for God. Worship fuels our love for God. We look in this passage, and from the, from the jump, it's all these things that happen as the people come and worship God. I rejoice with those that rejoice with those who said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. We'll get back into that again. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. And then it goes on, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And for the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. I see some things right in this passage that happen as the people of God come to worship God. There's an element of rejoicing, of praising that they're coming together. They're singing these songs, handing them up to God. They're rejoicing in his name. They're praising God together. Just think about that. Every week we have this little family reunion in this place, like the family of God, your brothers and sisters in Christ. We gather together, these people that you love, these people that you see week in and week out, and we're all on the same page, worshiping the same God, celebrating him together. Praise and rejoicing. There's that idea again of the city being closely compacted. Again, it's this place made for worship. We gather together right here. We were made to worship. And it works best when we are together. We were made for that. And we are in unity, in, in love and fellowship and joy together, that we work together. There's also this idea of, pray, of uh, there's learning the statutes, the laws of the Lord. We come together and we open up this book every single week. You're not gonna come to church and hear something like just, that, something that's not from the word of God. We look to this as our authority. We want to learn God's rules, his commandments, his goodness, who he is, what he's like, what he expects of us, how we can live for him. Every week we're diving into and learning the statutes, 
the goodness, the laws of the Lord. And they are good to us that we might be transformed and changed and renewed and refreshed. Man, it's like so amazing. Uh, when I hear some of you saying like, man, I heard that message or Tyler said this and God really spoke to me. God changed me. I'm living differently now because God is with me and I learned something new about God. That's what we do as we gather together. There's also this idea where they pray. They pray for their city. They pray for their brothers and sisters, their friends in Christ, in the Lord. And that's what we do. And we, every week we pray. We spend time directing our attention up to God and then we point us out towards the place that God has placed us. Up to God, we t there's something about that prayer of coming together that takes us out of ourselves, of our own problems or concerns or worries, and directs our attention up to God and out to those people that need to know him. So it fuels, and as we do that, it fuels us. It fuels us. The more you repeat that, the more you participate in that, the more that you engage with it, it you know this. It grows the passion. It grows the fire. It's a fan. It's like the bellows on a flame in a furnace of your heart. That you're connecting more and more with God and his people. Now, I know on a Sunday like this, on Father's Day, there's probably some of us that were dragged here by someone else. Maybe you're the dad that's like, we're going to church today. No arguing. And you're here. Glad that you're here. Some of you were dragged by your spouse like, hey, listen, I'm going to get a little religion in you on Father's Day. Get over here. Maybe you feel like you're here out of obligation. You're here just like, ah, I have to. Like, I, kinda, I know it's good for me. And I want to just encourage you that if you're here out of like, what, a perception of obligation, God actually talks about it in a different way, in a positive way. Um, God talks about it as obedience. Uh, the scriptures say God desires obedience, not sacrifice. Now, I know obedience isn't like a really fun word to think about, but I think we see this in our own lives. Jesus talks about it too in a parable of the two sons. There's a dad that goes to his two sons. He says, I need both of you to go work in the fields. And the first one says, no way, dad, not doing it. But he thinks about it later. And he says like, man, you know what? I should go. And he goes out and he works in the field. The other son, he says, yeah, right away, dad, I'm on my way. I got it. But he never actually goes. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't work. Does anyone have a child like that? <laughs> Jesus says, which one honored the father? Of course, it was the one that said no, but ultimately he did it. And so for some of you, you're in this place and maybe you're just like, man, I know I should go and I'm here, but I'm not really in it. I'm not really feeling it. Like, I wanted to say like, that honors God. God is honored by that and he will bless that obedience. Here's what Peterson says, one more quote from his book, talking about this idea. I'm just gonna read it off the screen. I can't have two things in my hand, it's crazy. I have put great emphasis on the fact that Christians, worship be, uh, that Christians worship because they want to, not because they are forced to. But I have never said that we worship because we feel like it. Feelings are great liars. If Christians worshiped only when we felt like it, there would be precious little worship. Feelings are important in many areas, but completely unreliable in matters of faith. You've had that morning where the alarm goes off and you know you're supposed to go to the gym and you just don't want to go. But you get out of bed, you put on your trainers and you go work out. Or you have that day where you've had a long day at work and you're really stressed, you're tired and you know you're going to the maelstrom of home where your kids are and you know like, I should spend time with them, I should play with them, I should hang out with my family. I'm just tired. I don't want to if I'm honest. I don't feel like it. But you do it anyways, and you find the joy in being with your family. Or you have a test, and you're exhausted. You've been just doing all this homework and all these different things, and you know, like, I have to study. I just, I don't feel like studying, but I should study. And you open up the textbook, and you study to do well. Or you wake up on a Sunday morning, and you just don't feel like it. But you decide, you know what? I'm going to go worship God with God's people. 
in all of those scenarios, like I've never heard someone like I woke, I rolled out of bed and I forced myself to work out and I totally regret it. No one says that. No one says like, I regret, I, I decided to spend time with my kids and my wife and yeah, it was a total waste of time. You know what I mean? Like I wish I took a nap instead. No, no one goes to church like, man, that was such a waste of time. I wish I'd just, you know, done something else. No, like people, when we do these things, even we know we want to, but we don't feel like it, God rewards that. That's our life. And I wanted to share a story of a, a guy in our church. His name's Mark Verlotti. And he had this thing happen. And I want to share the story. Here's what, there was, he was walking into church. He's walking into church. And one of our volunteers said like, wait, that guy, look at that guy right there. I got to know his story. What's, I need to know about this guy. Because he used to be in church and we'd be singing worship songs and he was just kind of arms folded, not engaged, like kind of just looking kind of upset that he was there. And now, and now he's in the front of the room, hands lifted high, he's singing louder and praising. He can't wait to get in church. What's the story of that guy? Let's hear Mark telling his words. For me, I was coming to CPC to, you know, in the sense of uh, Father's Day weekend, was to be a good husband and father. It wasn't like I was a total atheist, but I wasn't, I had no relationship. So my intentions coming here were just to be a good father and a good parent and, um, and bring my kids around like a positive environment. But I wasn't even seeking any relationship because I didn't, I, I thought, I didn't think there was anything to seek. My first reaction to a worship service was, this band rocks. Like, oh my God, this band rocks. I didn't even listen to the words. I, I saw the hands going up and I felt like it was manufactured, but whatever, it's my muscle memory. You know, the hands don't go above sea level. You know, it's like reserved. It's my Catholic upbringing. So obviously I had my guard up, but then to compound it, like my wife likes to sit in the front row. And like, I felt like, you know, Ryan, I was telling Ryan about this. I'm like, I'm like the size of two of you, Ryan. So I felt like they were putting a refrigerator in front of my elders in front of the back. So I was stuck. So I felt like I, I, felt like I was like blocking your guys' camera and everything. And I was just like, hands are not going up. Um, but then, you know, I was thinking about this. Like, when did, I, when did I soften and how did I let my guard down? And I think it, you know, there was a lot of things that happened. COVID happened. I joined a small group. I got baptized with my daughter. I mean, there's tons of things that happened the people around me like became familiar faces. Like, whether it was folks in my small group or maybe it was some of the elders who always kind of sit in the front left. The more shared experiences that we had together, like the more familiarity, even though I wasn't even like really saying much than hi. It's like, we kind of have that feeling about us, like that look in our eye, like we're here for the right reason and we're happy to be here together. We'll be in the middle of worship music I mean, I look to my left and I have like my beautiful family to my left and I look to my right and it's like my church family and it's like, I have too much joy now. I have too much joy and it's coming out of my eyes, I'm crying. So, and like, I'm not crying, there's nothing bad, there's no death, there's no, there's nothing bad, this is joy. It's gratitude. So I'm just looking like, man, our God is so good. I'm crying, I look like I have a, a, a allergic reaction to shellfish, man. I'm trying to compose myself. And I see all these happy people and they're, they're praising God. And I was like, uh, it just starts coming out of me. I go, oh, this is too good. I start choking, I start choking. And then I'm trying to like sing and cry at the same time and compose myself. And I'm not a crier either, you know? I'm like an old cow rugby guy, like we, we don't cry. But I look forward to it. It's like tears of joy. God is so good. He's so good. This is too good to be happening. And I start crying like a baby. But I have found a great space and a great environment in worshiping where it, it feels out of body to me. I feel connected. People say it's the Holy Spirit. That's what it is, huh? Okay. I like it. I'm coming back on Sunday. My friends, my brothers and sisters, we are made to worship God together. That's what we were made. We were made to worship God with God's people. And you heard Mark, like just that shared experience that we're in this place. You're looking around and you're saying, these people are worshiping the same God. And you think about all over the world, every single Sunday, how many millions of people are doing the exact same thing, gathering in their own communities, 
in homes and in buildings like this, in parks or wherever it is, and they're worshiping the same God. We get to do that together. So I just wanna encourage you to be a part of that. Like what Mark said, it's, just, it's the Holy Spirit. Hey, I'm coming back next week, all right. Think about those times that you've had in this place with these people, a time where a song just expressed exactly what your heart was saying. And you got to praise that and send that up to the Lord with his people. Think about a time where, even, even when we're giving, where it's like, man, like I am just excited about the work of God in this world. I got to be a part of this. Or maybe you were at a, hearing a message, a sermon, and it just felt like someone had read your journal that week and God was speaking right to your heart. That's what get, we get to do when we worship God with God's people. So right now, I wanna give us a chance. Maybe we've reframed it. Maybe we've fa fallen in love in, with God in a new and a fresh way. I wanna give us an opportunity to worship together. So we got the bands up here. We're gonna pray to close out this time, but let's worship together. Let's stand to our feet. Let's continue our worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, I thank you that we're here on this day to celebrate you. We celebrate you, God, our heavenly Father. We praise your name that you are the one that frees us and rescues us. You're the reason for those things. So Lord, right now I pray that we would direct our attention to you and even around us to our brothers and sisters as we praise your name together and worship you. So Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's praise together. It starts with a smile, so if you would put a smile on your face, let's clap those hands today. Our God is worthy of praise and honor. Come on, sing with me with a doubt. When the doubt in my way tries to steal what you said, saying I have no reason to praise, I will give thanks. Come on, sing that again. I will give thanks. With the roar. When the roar that I hear is the voice of my fear, trying to silence this hope in my heart, I will give thanks. Oh, yes, I will. I will give thanks. Come on, let's sing a song of thanksgiving. A song of thanksgiving is my battle cry. With joy as my weapon, I'll stand in defy the lie of the dark with my hands lifted to the sky.
Well, God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Listen, we have we still have breakfast burritos out there, and fathers, you can grab your hot sauce. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.